Hello everyone. So this is the uh, sixth lecture in unit five, and this is the last lecture in this course, electrical drives, yearly eight one two T. And in this lecture, I'll discuss about switched reluctance motor drive. So these are special uh, motors which require a special kind of drive system, uh, a special kind of VSI uh, topologies uh, that you will see in the lecture. So a switched reluctance motor is a rotating electric machine. Where both stator and rotor have salient poles. So you can see in the figure that both stators and rotor they are having salient poles. Okay, and uh, you are, you can see that there are six number of poles on the stator and uh, four number of poles on the rotor. So this uh, machine or this uh, serviced reluctance motor it is represented by six slash four slash uh, switch reluctance motor. So first number is for number of poles on the stator. Second number is for the number of poles on the rotor. Okay. The rotor is created from laminations in order to reduce the eddy current losses. The switched reluctance motor differ in the number of phases bound on the stator. Each of them has a certain number of suitable combinations of stator and rotor poles. So this is the uh, configuration. The motor is excited by sequence of current pulses applied to each phase. So each phase actually you will see that uh, they are controlled independently most of the time. The individual phases are consequently excited facing the motor to rotate or forcing the motor to rotate. The current pulses need to be applied to the respective phase at the exact rotor position. So in this type of uh, drives you will see that the uh, positioning of rotor is very very important so lot of cost will be involved in sensing uh, because we have to sense the rotor position exactly for precise control of the switch reluctance motor based drive system so the current pulses need to be applied to the respective phase at the exact rotor position related to the excited phase when any pair of rotor poles is exactly in line with the stator poles of the selected phase the phase is said to be in aligned position. So you can see from this configuration that uh, this is stator winding. Okay, so this pole you can see that uh, it is exactly in aligned position. Another one will be in quadrature position. Okay, so when any pair of rotor poles is exactly in line with the stator poles of the selected phase, the phase is said to be in an aligned position. That is the rotor is in the position of maximal stator inductance. So in that case, the um, inductance will be maximum. If the interpolar axis of the rotor is in line with the stator pole of the selected phase, the phase is said to be in an unaligned position. The rotor is in a position of minimum stator inductance. So inductance actually gets changed depending on the alignment of the rotor with the stator phases. The inductance profile of the uh, switched reluctance motor is triangular shaped with maximum inductance when it is in uh, an aligned position and minimum inductance when unaligned. So this you can see from here that uh, we are having inductances of these three stator phases. So this bold uh, actually shown for phase A inductance. Okay. So stator phase, for example, this one is stator phase. And this is the rotor. If they are both aligned, stator phase and rotor position, they are aligned. Then inductance, you can see that it is the maximum value. Okay. Then as the rotor position gets changed, the inductance value is also getting changed. Okay. Then it become minimum for some time. Then uh, you can see that uh, when unaligned position is there, when interpolar uh, phase is in the uh, stator phase of the phase A. Okay, in that case, you will see that uh, uh, the inductance will be minimum. Okay, then again it will increase and it become maximum again. Okay, because this is again in aligned position, then again it will fall. So you can see that it is triangular uh, shape type of uh, in structure for the inductances of phases. Similarly, for phase B and phase C, it can be drawn. Okay. So you can see that the uh, current in, in particular phase. So 
The individual uh, phases ABC are shifted electrically uh, by 120 degree related to each other. The interval when the respective phase is powered is called the dwelled angle. Okay. It is defined by the turn on and a turn off angle. So it is turn on, then it is turned off. So you can see that uh, for phase A, it is turned on uh, here and it is turned off at this position. Okay. So phase current will increase and it will reach to the maximum value. Okay. Then as the inductance gets increasing, the current will fall down and then phase is turned off at this position. Okay. When the voltage is applied to the stator phase, the motor creates torque in the direction of increasing inductance. When the phase is energized in its minimum inductance position, the rotor moves to the forthcoming position of maximal inductance. The movement is defined by the magnetization characteristics of the motor. A typical current profile for a constant phase voltage is shown in this figure. So you can see that uh, at minimal inductance it is turned on and it as it is increasing. So at that point of time it is turned off. This corresponds to the position when the rotor and the stator post start to overlap. When the phase is turned off, the phase current falls to zero. The phase current present in the region of decreasing inductance generates negative torque. The torque generated by the motor is controlled by applied phase voltage and by appropriate definition of switching turn on turn off time. So by having control on this turn on and turn off time, we can control the uh, motor speed because we can control the current and hence the torque. As is apparent from the description, the uh, 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 this uh, reluctance motor, okay. The SR motor requires the position feedback for uh, motor phase commutation. In many cases, this requirement is addressed by using position sensor like encoders, hall sensor. So, exact position of rotor is uh, is important. The result is that the implementation of mechanical sensors increases cost and decreases system reliability. More number of sensors, of course, will uh, reduce the reliability of the system. Traditional developers of motion control products have attempted to lower system cost by reducing the number of sensors. So a lot of uh, research actually is going on to um, minimize the number of sensors in switched reluctance motors. A variety of algorithms for sensorless control have been developed, most of which involve evaluation of variation magnetic circuit parameters that are dependent on the rotor position. The motor itself is a low cost machine of simple construction. High speed operation is possible. Thus, motor is uh, suitable for high speed application like vacuum cleaners, fan, uh, white goods, etc. As discussed above, the disadvantage of synchronous motor is the need of shaft position information for proper switching of individual phases. Also, the motor structure causes noise and torque repeal because it is not uh, purely sinusoidal. As you can see, the greater the number of poles, the smoother the torque repeal. But motor construction and control electronic become more expensive in that case. Okay. Torque ripple can also be reduced by advanced control techniques such as phase current profiling. So this is a structure of uh, digital control synchronous motor. You can see that for each phase, we are using uh, these two uh, switches, which are precisely turned on and turned off. Okay, in order to control the current through this, and that will control the torque and Hence, it will control the speed. So, for controlling the speed, the proper turn on and turn off time of these switches are uh, created with the help of pulse width modulation techniques. Okay. So, each phase you can see that they are controlled independently, unlike the conventional VSI fed induction motor drive. So, there is some uh, a little bit different in these types of drives. The switch reluctance motor is driven by voltage stroke coupled with the given rotor position the profile of the phase current together with the magnetization characteristic define the generated torque and thus the speed of the motor due to this fact the motor requires electronic control for, for operation several power stage topologies are being implemented according to the number of motor phases and the desired control algorithm the particular structure of the Switched reluctance power stage structure defines the freedom of control for an individual phase. Okay, a power stage with two independent power switches per motor phase is the most used topology. So this is the most used topology for switched reluctance motor. 
where per phase we are using two control switches which is uh, control independently allows the widest freedom of control other power stage topology share some of the power devices for several phases the saving on power stage cost but with this the phase cannot be controlled fully if you reduce the number of control switches then uh, cost will reduce but independently you cannot control each phases okay note that this particular topology of switch reluctance power stage is fault tolerant okay so uh, any fault occurring in the system the system will stand with that so this type of drive is uh, fault tolerant okay so you can see there are two type of pulse width modulation technique that is used in switch reluctance motor one is soft switching and another is hard switching these are very common terminology in power electronics soft switching means when both voltage and current zero voltage and zero current zero voltage or zero current switching that we call soft switching in that switching actually the losses will be low hard switching when voltage and current uh, both present in the uh, system and we turn on and turn off the uh, system of course there will be more switching loss in that so for soft switching actually you have to install some extra circuitry so cost will be more in soft switching cases hard switching actually the cost will be low so you can see that uh, and the, this is the inductance profile of uh, say for example phase a and we want to uh, generate the pulse width modulation technique so in aligned position the inductance is minimum uh, aligned position the inductance is maximum and in unaligned position the inductance is uh, minimum so upper switch in this so this q1 and q2 this is upper switch this is lower switch so pulse width modulation technique is upper switch is actually turned on and turned off okay and lower switch is turned on uh, from unaligned position to aligned position then this is turned off then again this is turned on like this okay so you can see that when both the switches are turned on then uh, voltage will be applied to this phase a so when this is turned on so current will flow like this okay so this will be the circuit in that case phase a and phase, phase a will be energized so phase voltage you can see that when our upper switch is turned on this is turned on so uh, common of these two so this will be the uh, voltage that is applied to the phase then uh, upper switch is turned off lower switch is turned on so there will be zero voltage applied in the um, in the across the winding okay similarly again when this is turned on so this is turned on so both switch are turned on so phase voltage is positive that is applied across the uh, phase a okay so this is the profile so current profile you can see that whenever positive voltage is applied across the phase the current will rise whenever zero voltage is applied so inductor will discharge through the freewheeling diode and it will uh, the current will decrease then again positive voltage is applied then again the current will increase then again zero voltage is applied so current will decrease okay so this will be the phase current profile and when negative voltage is applied the current will fall okay so this is the hard switching uh, technique so you can see that this is something like bipolar type of configurations okay so again when uh, so you can see that both upper switch and lower switch they are turned on and turned off okay so commutation of uh, both the switches take place simultaneously here lower switch the commutation is not taking place only upper switch we are turning it on and off but in hard switching case you can see that both the switch are turned on and turned off together so we are getting uh, plus vdc and minus vdc so you can see that the swing in the applied voltage across the phase is high so in these cases actually you will find that more will be electromagnetic interference and there will be high dv by dt okay and uh, ripple you will find uh, in the current that that will be more so you can see that whenever it is positive voltage the current is increasing whenever negative voltage it is falling so ripples you can see that the fluctuation in the current is high here ripple is very small okay so again hard switching is simple but uh, the performance is not that good soft switching actually you require extra circuitry to make it possible okay so most of the time we are using soft switching so this is the uh, practical uh, application description so how 
practical uh, switched reluctance motor drives looks like so we are having one power stage so this is called power stage where we are having supply and the inverter okay this is our motor and load is coupled with that motor now with the help of encoder we are taking the position of the uh, rotor and uh, based on that we are we are giving some speed command okay now the error is fed to the speed controller and inner loop we are having current controller okay based on that we are giving signal to the pwm generation block okay and based on so this will actually turn it on so for turning it off we require again the position of the uh, this rotor so angle commutation commutation angle we have to calculate from here so turn on is coming from this block turn off it is it is coming so actually you can see that uh, turn on and turn off uh, require two signals okay based on these two signals we can uh, generate pwm pulses for the switches in the inverter okay so this is called power stage and this we call control stage okay and this is since sensor this is motor so this is the basic block that require in uh, uh, actual drive system so this actually we can implement with the help of digital signal processor or we, we can implement with the help of dsp or we can uh, also implement with the help of fpga block or fpga board field programming will get errors so this is the actual drive uh, system so you can see that this is our switched reluctance motor this is our control circuit okay this is our power circuit where inverter and uh, inverter is here okay and uh, you can see that in between control circuit and power circuit we require up to isolation okay these two boards must be isolated and uh, uh, sensor feedback control signal uh, from the sensors is given to the dsp and dsp is programmed with the help of pc through these two parallel cable and serial cable and we have to write the program in C plus language uh, based on the required uh, speed we have to uh, actually write the program uh, and based on the speed it will automatically uh, set the speed of this motor okay so PC will program it and the this this will isolate so these are data cable that is supplying PWM pulses to the inverter switches uh, here okay and the power is given to uh, this uh, board okay external power is given to this board so this is called power stage this we call control stage and this called up to isolation board with, to con uh, to separate or to uh, to have separation between power stage and the control stage and this is our uh, motor motor is again here we have to couple some kind of uh, load okay so this is the actual uh, setup of three phase switch reluctance motor control application similarly for synchronous motor induction motor dc motor we, ha we have to change only this motor and we have to change the control algorithm depending on what kind of uh, control schemes we are going to implement uh, and rest of the things you will find it is same okay so how actual electrical drive looks so this is represented here okay so these are the components that are required in most of the cases either you are using induction motor drive synchronous motor drive dc motor drive okay so dsp boards uh, there are a lot of model here it is the dsp 56f805 board uh, you can also have fpga board or sometimes the control algorithm is uh, implemented using uh, dsp which is uh, uh, again programmed in c++ okay you can also use any other microcontroller to implement the control algorithm and uh, the pwm pulses are given to this power state through these cables okay so this is all about uh, this unit 5 and uh, this is the last lecture of uh, uh, this course okay thank you uh, if you have any query you can ask me uh, uh, you are most welcome and i will reply uh, to each and every inquiry of of yours okay thank you